Hello and welcome to Philosophy uh, 115, Critical Reasoning. Um, I'm your instructor for the course, Tim Linneman, and in this video I'm going to welcome you to the class. There's a ton of things to talk about and um, kind of show you around the website here and um, hopefully try to head off any possible confusion about where things are located, how the class is structured, all that kind of stuff. Um, but before I get started with any of that, I, I'm going to say this a million times at various places in the uh, website and in all the materials and on these uh, video lectures but um, really don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions about anything at any time for pretty much any reason um, I'm not one of those instructors who resents uh, having their students contact them when they're not like on the clock or something like that um, this is gonna be a bit of an adventure this quarter um, for a couple reasons one um, this is my first time teaching this class in a strictly online format, and so there's going to be some things to, some kinks to work out for sure. I'm in, there, I still have a couple questions about how I'm adapting the material. I'm pretty good for right now, but I'm still working some material out as we go. I made a note um, a little in one of these documents about the schedule. If you're one of those people who works through an online course really fast, and wants to get through like a bunch of material really quickly you might hit a block uh, in a little bit just because I'm backed up on the video lectures so those are gonna take a little time for me to make and get posted um, but otherwise all the material for the class is pretty much put into place and there's a home for it we just gotta work out a few kinks so that's one thing that's gonna make this an adventure is adapting the course to online so I'm gonna use you all as my guinea pigs and definitely let me know how it goes if something's working or not working for you I'd like to know about it the other thing though is that I just had my first child two and a half weeks ago so I'm heading into a different um, life space with some different challenges to it so I appreciate your patience with that but um, I Again, I really don't want to give any kind of discouragement toward you reaching out and trying to get in contact with me. Working with students, especially on a one-on-one -on -one, um, sort of basis, is my favorite thing about my job and my profession. So um, there's no reason to withhold that from me uh, or from yourself. So I think I can be helpful. And I think this class in particular is one that um, benefits from that kind of um, personalized feedback. Um, one thing I always like to say to my critical reasoning students, I've, I've taught this time, this class many, many, many times, but just never online. So it's a little different. Um, and I am a little wary about it. I'm there, this, in this particular, for this particular reason, that I usually tell my critical reasoning students that this is a class where um, mastery is not something that you can read right off the page. This is um, the kind of stuff we're going to be learning with informal logic um, is really hands-on. And it's it's not just a matter of understanding a principle or concept intellectually, but it's also about learning how to use that concept or principle or analytic tool, um, how to employ it into an actual case like a weapon, like cut something, you know, like an analysis. You have to know how to wield that thing to accomplish what you want to accomplish in a given case scenario. So there's always this one-two punch to the class. There's understanding the concepts and then learning how to apply them and understanding the concepts I mean you can read the the online materials uh, and listen to my lectures and read the course book and all that kind of stuff and get the concepts um, and maybe you want some explanation for that too but the the real mastery happens with this application step and so getting feedback on how you're applying it um, whether you, there's some you know the, some pitfalls there's a, a, with all this stuff there's some little classic mistakes that happen that I've learned either from just myself or from teaching this class so many times I'm working with students so I got a lot to offer to help you on refining that mastery and getting it where you want it to be um, so because the class is online um, there's less of that kind of everyday we get to see each other and talk sort of thing in person so I'm gonna be striving really hard to find as many ways to bring a little more personal touch to this online class uh, including um, weekly uh, hangouts where I'll be I'll set aside some time where I'll just hang out online on a Google Hangout uh, video chat and anyone can drop in and ask questions as they want to um, it's a great way to kind of learn from your peers too but more on that I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the course design a little bit later let's take a look at the website and see what we've got going on 
um, on the home page here, you'll see the course is uh, set up in a series of modules. Uh, if you've used Canvas before, this is probably going to look a little familiar. But if it if this is your first time using Canvas or your first time taking an online class, again, don't hesitate to get in contact with me and ask me any questions if you're confused at all. Um, but there, there will be things will be arranged in a series of modules, <clears throat> which you can see here. And those modules will have a bunch of activities for you to do. Um, there's a few basic, th this first getting started module's got a lot of stuff, but it's a, a lot of little in packets of information and stuff. This, uh, this module here, the language of arguments, is going to be the first sort of regular kind of module you'll have for the course. Um, there'll be, uh, in this first um, uh, bit of actual material for the course, um, I'm actually going to give you a PDF here of the first chapter we'll be using from the textbook, Understanding Arguments. Um, hopefully that'll tide you over as you're waiting for your textbook to arrive in the mail or maybe to get to the bookstore to pick one up. Um, so you, you'll be fine through this first module here as you're waiting. Um, there'll be uh, lecture notes that I will post and these are these are um, lecture notes that I've really written for myself. Sometimes they're a little more detailed and sometimes they're a little less detailed in trying to pull out information from the text and it, it definitely is useful as a study guide but I'll also be accompanying um, these lectures with a video version um, so you'll be able to take a look at it um, in the note version if you want a kind of like a little reminder or cheat sheet uh, or study review guide a lot of uh, everything that's going to be on the exams is definitely there in the lecture notes um, but there are some times where it may not read right off the page so <clears throat> there's also the lecture the video lecture so you can hear a human being um, say these things and offer more little details and anecdotes and all that good stuff um, as we go um, there will sometimes be uh, supplement um, supplementary files like this linguistic analysis diagram it's just a little picture that illustrates um, something that I'll be lecturing on <clears throat> over the years I've had students make all sorts of guides for me or I've made them myself and so you'll see some of those uh, filtering into the material here as we go there will be a um, homework assignment <clears throat> and I'll, I'll put a there's an assignment here for the homework but then there's also you'll see this document called homework exercises for chapter whatever it is um, that's actually a PDF that has scans of all of the exercises taken from the textbook and the reason I do this is so that um, if you've got different editions of the text it won't be confusing which exercises you're supposed to be doing or which problems that sometimes are numbered differently they make little slight adjustments between all the different versions of the text. So this is the one-stop shopping for all your homework exercises. They're all uh, grabbed in scans and plopped together in that PDF file. So use that as a supplement for doing the homework. Um, once, you come, once you submit the homework, then you'll get access to the homework answer key. And this answer key is actually not from the instructor's manual to the text. These are actually answers that over the years I have put together. Uh, to try to not only give um, better answers when I thought I had better answers than what the textbook authors thought was the right answer. Um, sometimes there's a little disagreement in philosophy between philosophers about what is proper reasoning. and So you'll see some of that here. Um, <clears throat> or at least that's what's behind that. Um, but I also have wanted to give more than just the answers. I've wanted to try to show a fuller answer or to explain it a little bit more and so these homework answers I've uh, composed as a way of giving you a little more help and support for understanding these problems and what we're looking to have them do. Um, you'll see some more notes there the first time you look at those about some advice about how to handle the answers. I'll, I'll, I'll say a little bit about it right now. Um, in informal logic the answers are not going to be as um, sharp and fast as in other areas of uh, reasoning, most notably formal logic. Formal logic is almost like math in its discreteness um, and the clarity of like this is an appropriate inference and this is an inappropriate inference. So actually we'll talk about validity and invalidity um, later in this course actually we're talking about formal logic. But in informal logic there's a lot of other standards you might say fuzzy, um, but they're harder to apply or to evaluate and to be able to see what is happening with them. 
Um, that's not always because the principles or standards themselves are unclear, but mostly because of issues of controversy and interpretation. So the, that's going to make um, coming up with answers a little difficult. And I've got some advice about how we're going to handle that and how you should approach uh, evaluating your own homework answers too. But this whole getting the right answer thing, that's not going to really work uh, as easily or as straightforwardly in a course like this one. Um, but at every step along the way, I'll be trying to explain to you the reasoning behind this evaluation versus that uh, uh, evaluation. Uh, uh, definitely with this class, I've learned from the years of teaching it um, to try to help my students in any way possible to, so that there's not any surprises. Like the worst thing would be like you get your exam back and you think you nailed it and I just think differently from you and so you fail it. That's exactly the kind of case that I'm <laughs> trying to avoid for many, many installments of this class. So. Um, yeah, we'll work on we'll work on particularly this aspect about answers together over the course of the quarter. But um, there are answers; they're just sometimes hard to find, controversial, um, or hard to articulate. So more on that as we keep going this quarter. Um, and then sometimes I'll uh, you know th this is a good module here, the language of arguments, because you can see that there's another document here right at the end called extra implication problems. Sometimes I'll throw some extra uh, homework problems at you in case you want to get a little bit more practice. Um, so that's just there as a study guide for you. So there'll be um, these modules, and then eventually you'll get to an exam module. Um, there, the class is divided into three chunks. Um, the first two are kind of the big, meaty ones, and then there's a little one right at the end. So you're going to kind of, this course trajectory is going to let you down nice and easy rather than building up to this ethically stressful climax. Um, so the, f but the first two are going to be the bigger ones. So this one, you have three modules here before the first exam, and then the next one is two modules, but they're both a little heftier, uh, and then exam two, and then this, this final, final chunk on the informal fallacies with the third exam. The third exam, incidentally, is just going to be a matching exam. It's going to be very simple and straightforward in terms of the procedure. Um, there's still some trickiness to this because, you know, we want to get the informal fallacies right, and there's some things that, c that can be confusing there. You can mix up for certain. But uh, exam three will definitely feel um, a lot easier compared with exams one and two, which will be a little bit more demanding, um, including things like you'll have to do written analysis. And there's a, a lot, one of the things that makes this class a little challenging is that you're definitely going to be asked to explain your thinking very often. I mean, this whole the whole point of this course is developing critical reasoning skills. So part of that is being able to articulate your thought process and why you arrived at a certain conclusion. And ac actually, in many cases, especially on the exams, um, I will accept answers that, not necessarily how I would evaluate something, um, but I might accept your answer because your thinking process uh, reveals how or the way that you're explaining your thinking process and your answer reveals that you understand the rational techniques that we're learning, even if you use them in a different way than I would use them. Even if we've got those kinds of different ways of thinking, there are some standard universal tools here that we can develop mastery on and get on the same page about. So um, it's not always, uh, it's definitely, definitely don't approach exam answers as trying to think about it the way you guess I would think about it. Um, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> But um, also uh, on these exam modules, um, there'll be a study guide available to you um, to help you prepare. I'm going to be available, like I mentioned, um, in the evenings every week to make with these windows for video um, chat drop-in sorts of things, kind of like a study hall online. Um, I'll just be hanging out in case you want to meet. Um, but you can always get a hold of me many other ways. Uh, I'll talk about my contact information a little bit. Um, but uh, so there'll be time to study and prepare that's been set aside in the course too to have, so that you've got you can take a couple days doing some review um, before jumping on the exam and then moving on to the next module also with exam one and exam Ooh. sorry about that with exam one and with exam two uh, there will be a makeup exam opportunity um, after the first exam so you'll take exam one you'll get it graded and then 
over there won't be a time limit on this uh, I leave it open but um, all you have to do to move on from the exam module is complete the first exam the makeup is optional but once you complete that exam you can uh, and you get it graded from me we can um, set you up with the makeup exam too I always recommend meeting with me and going over the first exam before you just take the makeup exam um, and see what we can learn and diagnose but um, as you'll see in the syllabus where I'm talking about the tests and please read the syllabus please read the syllabus um, but in the syllabus when I talk about the tests uh, I mentioned how it's important to me that exams are not just this kind of way of grading you or a way of testing you um, to see what you have learned but it's also a part of the learning process itself I'm not the biggest fan of tests um, if I had my way there wouldn't be any uh, we would just try out problems together and work on them <laughs> um, but uh, we're we're in this meritocratic society unfortunately and it's not my way but we're gonna do it this way um, but I as much as possible I try to push against that and try to give it um, some actual uh, pedagogical weight by giving you opportunity to learn so you'll, you'll be able to try out the exam um, definitely you want to give it your best shot the first time but if something goes wrong, if something gets messed up, if, or if you just don't get the grade that you're looking for at this, if you want to get higher mastery, maybe even you did great and you just want more practice and, and really refine it, that's awesome. Um, the makeup exam is there to uh, push your mastery further. So that's how that's going to work. So there's this kind of diet of readings from this text, video lectures, homework exercises for practice, um, and then leading up to uh, exams and then makeup exams. That's kind of that's kind of the rhythm of this this course. Um, incidentally, your homework will not be graded um, for scores, in the sense of I'm not going to be saying you this is the right answer, this is the wrong answer. I'll be just giving you credit for the homework if you do it. So um, d definitely, you want to give it your best shot. There's no quizzes you'll notice in the course, so the exams are kind of the big thing. Um, so uh, definitely want to take the homework very seriously and invest in um, not only doing it but checking up on your work and seeing where you got a fuzzier understanding or whether you got a solid understanding and then um, seeking out me and other resources as much as you need to to get where you want to be with this um, critical reasoning is learning these skills is something you'll spend your whole life on so much of this is a matter of making uh, you get sick of me talking about judgment calls and background knowledge but that's a big part of informal reasoning and you're always growing in experience as you get older so um, these are things that we can always stand to be doing a better job of in my experience people think they are way better critical reasoners than they actually are everyone takes themselves to be sort of like I know what I'm doing even even if they're like I'm not very smart they still think they're good reasoners it's really interesting I like they trust their judgment most most people most of the time not everyone I've met some people who don't fall in that category but we tend to think of ourselves as good reasoners as being able to sniff out bullshit when it's there and being able to recognize something that is legit um, and we're we well, we all have room to improve on that um, including myself so uh, definitely I encourage you to put as much as you can into this class it, this is a class where the more you put into it the more you'll get out of it um, and as I started this whole thing with um, I am very willing to help you get more out of it um, I sometimes like to use this metaphor of um, you know when you make a donation to a charity and like a corporation or something's like we'll match your donation like 50 cents on the dollar or maybe a dollar to a dollar or something like that I kind of think of my own uh, time and energy in this sort of way. If you want to throw extra energy into this course to get something more out of it, I'm I'm willing to match your pledge uh, with my own time and energy. So so don't don't feel um, don't don't hesitate. Don't feel shy. Um, I want to help you get as much out of this class as possible. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of the course and what's going on in it really quickly again please read the syllabus and get all the juicy details including how the grades will break down so I'll, I won't mention that so you've got some reason to look at the syllabus <laughs> um, but there's a lot of good stuff in there um, okay so let's talk about the different parts of the canvas site so I'm looking over here on this um, sidebar on the left 
home is at where we're at right now and you can see all the modules on home uh, and then here's announce a uh, section for announcements um, I made a little quick announcements just telling you to go to modules um, and get started on the get started module uh, but there'll be more announcements here I'll be communicating with you um, throughout the quarter especially in letting you know about the site construction so as I'm getting video lectures done and posted I'll be giving you updates to let you know about that I'll also be um, in the getting started module at the very end uh, here let's just go right back to it so we could go to if you follow my advice in this announcement you would go to the modules tab it's about halfway down here and in the getting started module there's a recommended schedule and I'm going to click on this right now and it'll take you to this document most of the documents uh, in canvas you'll be able to view just right in the browser like this um, and so like I said uh, with the online schedule maybe you know with an online course you can maybe do things at your own pace but uh, I've given you a recommended schedule for getting this all done in the quarter um, and and I do have an important note here um, but so even though the you will not be able to go at whatever speed you want because uh, you'll, I'll be catching up here with some video lectures I'll be doing those ahead of time so you will be able to jump a little bit ahead of time but also I'll be making announcements kinda of le letting you know where we're at just little reminders about where things are here um, in the course and where you need to be where there, there will be some hard deadlines even though you can jump ahead there will be some deadlines here to make sure that you there is an assistance to you to stay on schedule with keeping getting things done um, so there'll be when I put a deadline for something that's like the last time that it can be done it's not its first sort of due date but it's I mean don't think about it like the first due date that then could get pushed or be late or something think about it as kind of more like a deadline that you definitely want to be at this point by this time this is kind of the far end of the range that you want to be but um, here, here is a recommended schedule of how long I think this stuff takes. This is informed mostly from how long it takes us to get through this material when I teach this class uh, on campus in a face-to-face -face class. Um, so this might, your mileage may vary. Things might be different a little bit. And this whole thing is a little bit of an experiment, like I mentioned. So please, again, give me feedback on how things are going with the schedule. But going back to what we were talking about, I will be checking in with you through announcements. Uh, and if there's any big things that are happening or maybe some changes to what's going on, you'll definitely see an announcement from me here. I'm not going to let you down on that. Um, so the, that's you'll find these are just me. They're almost like blog posts or something. I'll post up there, let you know what's happening. Um, the assignments tab will let you view all the assignments kind of in one spot. This is not all of them because I need to populate it with a few more, but that's most of them. But really, um, assignments getting uh, access to them here is not really the best way the best way again is with this modules tab um, because it's all organized in the order in which um, you should be doing things so um, rather than just seeing the whole quarter all at once so I recommend the modules way of getting access but the assignments you can see all of them kind of listed there um, at least the ones that I've made so far <laughs> um, that, I think I think that assignments list is mostly populated. Um, this discussions tab, this is where we could have some discussions. And I've used forum posts before um, with other classes I've taught online. I'm thinking maybe it might be cool to let the discussion board be a way of people asking questions about material. Um, but I, I, I kind of like the ability to um, talk in person about that too, using those um, online hangout things but depending on your circumstances that may not be something you'll be able to do might not be at a time uh, or for maybe other reasons so this might be another way to um, ask questions and get feedback about things other than calling me texting me uh, emailing me or showing up to these video chats so um, I might start making some discussion groups here once we start getting into the material of the course um, so that you can ask some questions. You can see your grades here. I'm not going to let you see that um, or that. Um, the file section here is where um, you'll see all of the documents that I've uploaded for this course. 
Um, but again, this is not really where you probably want to go to access these things. Think of this kind of like a reference library. Again, the modules are presenting all that you need in the order in which you need it. Um, but if you need a particular document, for whatever reason, you can find it here in the files um, section. Here is um, the syllabus. The syllabus is also, of course, in that first getting started module, but it's, it's also up here on the website. <clears throat> here you'll be able to see all the quizzes. It's kind of like the assignments page. And then the modules tab, of course, we've already looked at. And I think that's, that's mostly it. There are some other cool links here, like links to the Academic Success Center at BC, um, the library. Uh, that's all good stuff. But um, most of our time will be spent here in the modules and working through the different items that are in these modules. There also, I believe, if you go to the maybe the dashboard here, or oh, calendar, right? Yes. So over here, um, just to the right of the modules thing was uh, here. I'll go back to that um, so we can see that. Um, okay. So here's my mouse. There's a view calendar link right here. It says coming up, view calendar. And there's nothing for the next week here because I haven't set any deadlines on anything yet. Uh, but there will be some of those soon. But if you click on the view calendar, um, then you'll get this nice calendar view that will um, have the days. And then it'll have little reminders here about certain upcoming deadlines uh, for assignments and things like that. So. Um, that you might find as a useful way to keep track of what's going on and uh, stay uh, up to date on everything. Um, and that is just about it for um, showing you around the website and what's happening here. Let's talk really briefly about this first getting started module. Here's a little document about me and a welcome to the course and kind of a little bit of my thinking about it. Um, and then all of my contact information is here. Uh, let's actually, let's take a look here. So here's my contact information. I do give out, um, I, I give out my uh, phone number here. You can, you can text and call me. That's totally cool with me. I don't care about that. Um, so far, no student has, I've been teaching for like eight years now. No student has ever abused this access, um, thankfully, and so I, I, I continue to give it out. So I always say, like, don't be the class that convinces me never to do this again. Um, and then I also give you my Gmail email. And this email, uh, in addition to my Bellevue College email, you can send me emails at the Bellevue College email, that's fine. Um, but I definitely prefer the Gmail one, uh, mostly because uh, it goes right to my phone, and so I can get back to you like that. And that's what I always like to do. I like to be able to be as responsive as I can. I did mention I do have this child thing, and that might make me a little more, well, a little less responsive. Uh, might slow me down a little bit. Um, and just so you know, I'm always going to be teaching in the mornings, um, so there will be probably an hour area there where I won't be responding if you're trying to get a hold of me. Um, but in the afternoons and evenings. I'll try to be getting back to you just as quick as I can as it fits with what's going on in my life. Um, but I, like I said, I love talking with students and I love collaborating with you um, outside of the outside of class. I mean, we don't have a classroom on the online thing, but uh, outside of the formal strictures of what you have to do for the course. Um, so I'm looking forward to meeting and getting to know um, all of you and yeah. It's always exciting, even if it's online. I'm not like I'm definitely a people person, sort of like I like having them right in front of me. But we'll be able to make it work. I've done this before, and it's it's been cool. Okay, and then you got the course syllabus here. And again, I'll, I'll leave you to take a look at that. Um, there's the link for this video that you're watching right now, which uh, you must have already gotten to. Actually, this should probably let's put this up here. <clears throat> and then uh, there will always. This is another thing I didn't mention this earlier. With the video lectures, um, I do want you watching them. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to unpack and talk about in the video lectures that may not show up if you're just reading the book. 
uh, or even just looking at my lecture notes. I mean, even if you're just kind of looking through them, there's there's some stuff you're going to miss. So I want you watching these, um, and I'm going to give you credit for it. Um, just like uh, there'd be attendance credit in an uh, on campus on a brick and mortar kind of class, um, you'd get credit for showing up. So I'm going to give you credit for watching these videos and listening to me yap at you. Uh, so every time in a video, I'll give you a code, and all you have to do is put it in this like one question quiz. I have like website tour code right here. It says website tour code. If you open this up, it'll be a quiz, and it'll just ask you one question. I, I can show it to you. Preview. Give the code that you heard in the video lecture. Here, I'll even give you the code right now. The code. Uh, what should I do for a code? Um, uh, um, well, okay. My Cubs just cinched the division this week. I'm a big fan of the Chicago Cubs. Um, been a fan all my life. It's really weird this year that we're actually winning. That's not something I'm used to. So the code this time will be Cubs. And all you'd have to do is just type that in there. Cubs right in there, boom, and submit, and you'd be good, and you're going to get credit for this. So that's, it's that simple. It's that simple. And that's just a way I'm going to uh, get the excuse to um, uh, give you credit for uh, watching these things. Um, and it, it, even if you read it and it, it all makes sense and you understand it, Sometimes just hearing it again, or just in a different modality, like reading versus listening, um, or just talking through things over and over, that's how you kind of pick it up. Um, I'm, I always tell students, sometimes students are like, oh, I didn't want to make you repeat yourself by asking this question. I'm like, why didn't you ask me these questions? And they're like, I didn't want to make you repeat yourself. I'm like, and I always say, if I didn't like repeating myself, I chose the worst line of work ever. Because all you do as a teacher is repeat things over and over and over again. So that's fine. Um, I'm totally into that, and if you have questions about these things, definitely ask me. Um, and sometimes just hearing things over and over really helps for, for learning this stuff. Okay, so website tour, learn about me, syllabus. Here's a link to the um, learning outcomes for this course as posted on the Bellevue College website. Um, it's really not as exciting as it sounds. <laughs> I think my syllabus is more interesting. Um, there is this first intro lecture. And I'm actually going to show you these um, because this is a little different than um, the other kind of material. Um, I, I will probably give another video, maybe a short video lecture on this intro, but I'm, I'm, I'm not planning on it right now. I'm not to think about it. I really want to get the next module up and running in case you're really eager to get into the course material. So I want to get that prepared as soon as possible. Um, so the intro lecture here. This is something, um, usually I, I have a little class discussion um, where I ask my students in the first couple days um, what are sort of their uh, intuitive judgments and you know what they've learned to associate with being critical and using rationality in their lives. Um, and these are some answers I've gotten from other students. And I think it's important to note that <clears throat> critical reasoning isn't some kind of perfect thing. It's not this panacea that solves everyone's problems, that the world would not be um, dealing with any kind of conflict or suffering if people just were better critical reasoners or something like that, or we can solve all these problems this way. Um, <clears throat> but it does, definitely has a lot of very valuable resources to offer in making decisions about what to believe and how to act, which is the things that we have controversy over, what to think and how to act. It pretty much covers all the bases right there. Critical reasoning is about holding those choices accountable to argumentative justification. Um, <clears throat> and that's there's a lot of cool things that can come out of that, and hopefully by the end of the quarter you'll see uh, just what it has to offer. But it um, also comes with some dangers. There's definitely some pitfalls here. And, um, well, maybe now I'm just kind of giving my intro lecture, but um, I always like to say that critical reasoning, right from the get-go, critical reasoning, this class, is not just teaching you some tools like this is how you do this thing. Like if you're in the ultrasound program at BC and you're like, this is how you use an ultrasound machine. It's not like that. Um, critical reasoning is really a 
I like to say, an ethical paradigm. It's really a lifestyle. It's telling you how to make decisions about what to do in your life, how to think and how to act. Um, there are other ways of making those decisions other than using the tools of critical reasoning. Um, so I think there's an accounting that has to be taken of this. What are what are the things that we might what that might draw us toward critical reasoning as the best way or maybe our favorite or primary way of making those choices? But also, what are the things that we might be nervous about? What are the concerns here? If we do things this way, then what are the risks that we're running? So these lists here in the intro lecture are a little bit of um, uh, some quick answers from what students have given me in the past. I think there's a lot more to think about here and I encourage you to reflect on it for yourself. Um, but this is good, uh, to play the cards on the table here. This is all kind of a lead-in, so you can see here, for asking this question. Um, if there are some possible advantages of living your life with critical reasoning as your technique of making these decisions about how to think and how to act, and there's also some concerns and risks that we want to avoid, but it's not an all-or-nothing thing. It's not like being a critical reasoner guarantees good things or guarantees bad things. It's kind of like maybe this could happen if we're not keeping an eye on it, or we can hope for this, but it's not a guarantee kind of thing. Um, then the, that raises the question, how should we be critical reasoners in order to try to get the good without the bad? How do we engage in critical reasoning in a way where we get to enjoy all the benefits and advantages that it has to offer while avoiding the kind of nastier things that can occur? Um, and that's what this code of intellectual conduct uh, is all about. As I say here, it's an attempt to answer that. So once you get to this point in the intro lecture, I want you to actually stop and then go back to the module and go on here, so that was the intro lecture, now go on to a code of intellectual conduct and then this supplement to the code of intellectual conduct. Um, code of intellectual conduct looks like this. It's actually a pretty short document. It's just 12 principles um, that give us some guidance for uh, constraining our behavior in context of argumentative disagreement. Uh, and I did not compose this. This is from another philosopher who wrote a book called Attacking Faulty Reasoning, which we'll be actually using at the very end of the quarter. Um, for the uh, informal fallacy section. This was, uh, just to be clear, there's only one required text for the course. Uh, it's understanding arguments. Attacking faulty reasoning, optional text. I do recommend it. It's a cool text with a little caveat, which I'll talk about when we get to it. Um, it's, but it's a fantastic encyclopedia of the informal fallacies. Um, but I will be giving, it's optional because I will be giving you a PDF of all the selections that we'll be doing from it when we get to that section at the end of the quarter. So you don't have to buy it. It's not, you don't have to buy it, but I would, I would recommend it as a resource. Um, but I want you to read through this code as a kind of a contract proposal. Uh, I think that's the best way to think about it as like, if two people are going to get into a debate with each other, try to work out like a disagreement or a controversy, try to figure out what's actually true. Um, would they agree? Would If you're going to do that, would you want to have this kind of agreement that we're going to try as much as possible, we're going to aim to conduct ourselves in accordance with these principles, um, that that might help guide our efforts uh, so that we get this good without the bad. Um, and then I also want you to read this thing I wrote called the Supplement to the Code of Intellectual Conduct. Usually um, I would spend day, a few days, probably like three days, talking about this one short document, the Code of Intellectual Conduct. There's a lot of things I like to unpack about it. I think it's, there's, there's just so much going on here. And I, even if the rest of the quarter you learn nothing and you don't remember anything, I have to you know, get through your exams and then you know, it all falls out of your head. <laughs> if you just hung on to this Code of Intellectual Conduct and maybe even just the image that it offers, this picture that it paints of what, um, what it can look like for two people to disagree with each other and in a really idealistic way. It's really possible. I mean, I've got, um, well, I've experienced it personally, and I think most people have too, that most cases of disagreement are not positive ones. Most of the time when people are debating with each other, it doesn't go very well. Um, oh, man, I don't even want to get started about talking about what's going on in the world right now. It's really tough. It's hard to watch sometimes <laughs> how people uh, treat each other and abuse each other in context of disagreement. And, and debate, offering arguments, trying to justify beliefs uh, and actions. Um, and it just gets so nasty so fast. But there's, there is 
another way that things can happen than the ugliness that we all too often witness. And I think the Code of Intellectual Conduct does a good job of um, painting that picture of what, what can happen uh, if we're intentional about how we decide to talk to each other. Um, my my fiancé, this is getting a little more personal, but well, not that personal, but um, my, my partner um, is a therapist. And she um, uses uh, something called nonviolent communication. She's like trained in this technique of nonviolent communication. The whole point of this technique is to just find ways for people to talk to each other where they're not going to be at each other's throats, you know, where they can do some radical listening to each other and encounter each other as people. The main focus of nonviolent communication is relational. Um, critical reason, but it, the one thing I will say about NVC, and we, if you actually know about NVC and want to debate it with me sometime, I'd love to. This is a very interesting topic to me. Um, but the one thing about NVC is that it isn't really focused around, it's, it's creating a structure for how to talk, but it's not really focused around critical engagement. It's not looking to explore debate, debate space. And the Code of Intellectual Conduct is specifically about that. Um, but I, I think it doesn't lose sight of the demands about uh, the relational aspect to that space. And I'm really keen on that as an ethicist um, and as someone who approaches critical reasoning with an ethical lens. Um, that's really high on my radar too. And I think you'll see that reflected in the course as we go forward. So this is a longer document. It is um, like four times as long as the original code. But please read this too. This is this is a signed reading. Uh, even though um, this material you will not be, um, yeah, I won't be throwing any of this stuff on the exam. I think it's some of the more valuable material of the course. So I wanted to start off with it. I wanted to uh, kind of use it as a frame for the for the rest of the course. So those are the early materials here in this getting started thing. And this this is um this getting started thing is not just like a one day module. This is really intended to carry you through the first week. So um, as you're as you're getting through this week, um, there's this is this is enough to get started on. But if you do want to get started on the second one, uh, like I said, I will be aiming to get that uh, video lecture up as quickly as possible so that you can uh, plow ahead if that's what you're looking for. Um, and then, uh, like I mentioned earlier, there is this recommended schedule document, and you'll see, like I said, getting started no more than one week. So, you know, it's, it's for the first week, but I, I would definitely not be uh, procrastinating further on getting to language of arguments, and that's where we're going to begin. So um, I'm going to wrap up this video here of um, getting you uh, welcome to the class and, and introduce the website. Um, by uh, talking about where we'll, we'll be going first here with this uh, language of arguments um, module. The, the basic idea here is that, in the, and actually the whole first block, um, so if we go to the modules here, you know, the first block before the first exam, the language of arguments, the building blocks of arguments, and extended argumentative analysis, this whole block of the course is really just about listening. We're not going to get to evaluating arguments yet. We will be analyzing them. But I always have some students who are chomping at the bit to want to be like, that's bullshit and that's legit. But um, we're going to hold the horses on that. Um, and instead, we're going to focus on figuring out how to listen to what arguments people are offering and understand what's going on with them. You can't criticize something you don't understand. So that's always step one. Listening is step one. Then critical evaluation is step two. Um, so we're going to focus on listening, and just like how a painter would want to, in order to be a good painter, you know, you need to have like artistic vision and that kind of stuff, but um, you also need to know your materials. You need to know how the paint behaves. Like uh, <laughs> this summer, uh, I think Netflix put on Bob Ross. Netflix picked up Bob Ross, Joy of Painting. Uh, if you ever watched Bob Ross Afro, Happy Little Trees is fantastic. I watched them as a kid. We watched a few of them this summer. Um, Bob Ross really knows his his paints. He knows what he can get away with with them. So he has vision, but it's sometimes you know it's fun to watch him paint because you're like, whoa! I didn't think that was gonna be, you know, a beautiful mountain or something. It just looked like garbage, and but then he made it work because he knows what he's doing with his paints. He's very skilled about that. In a similar way, if we want to be good at arguing, if we want to be good at creating and evaluating arguments to find the truth then we need to understand the medium that we're working with. And whenever we're arguing, we're always doing it through the medium of language. 
So we want to understand language a little bit. Or I'm, I'm, we've got this module on linguistic analysis to get us started to try to be able to pull on, apart when we're, when we're analyzing a particular argument. What's kind of the contribution from the medium, from language, versus what's the rational and conceptual content of this argument? To be able to pull those things apart. Um, how to listen for the ideas behind the words is um, a good mantra here for the first few modules. I'm always, I'm going to be probably talking about that a lot in my lectures about, you know, we're not trying to get obsessed about the words uh, or sentences like copy and paste kind of mentality, but to try to understand the ideas that are behind those words. That's what we're really focusing on. But in order to do that, in order to be a little more skilled in, in that listening, it's good for us to understand some things about how language works. And kind of the grand culmination of this first module is um, a, a theoretical uh, analysis of conversational implication about how we, um, when we're communicating with each other, how we send implied messages along that are not what we explicitly say with our words. Um, if you turn back the clock a decade, um, or a little bit more than that, when I first encountered Paul Grice's theory of conversational implication, um, you probably would have uh, seen me say something like, I don't think a theory of conversational implication is possible. There's no way you could find what are the universal principles. It always depends on context. Uh, and implication certainly does depend on context, but I think you'll be surprised uh, at just um, uh, how interesting of a proposal Paul Grice has for us here about what really makes conversational implication tick uh, regardless of context. Um, context is definitely a part, but there's some other structural elements to implication. Um, and in, I've definitely seen I've, uh, Paul Grice's theory used to great effect um, in understand and just being able to apply it into everyday cases of conversation. So we're trying to communicate and be like, wait, I'm, we might be misunderstanding each other here. Do you mean to imply, you know, those moments that happen, but using Paul Grice's theory to, one, just be a little more skilled in your interpretation, but two, give you a little bit of language to articulate how you're coming and arriving at that uh, interpretation and maybe some sensitivity to where you could have missed something. So that's what's coming up language of arguments, uh, and I'll have that video lecture up for you soon. So again, welcome to the class, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, talking with you all. I would, um, I, it would be my preference if by the time this quarter is over, I've been able to have some kind of interaction with every single student in this class. If you're just a student who just, you know, kind of lurked on the internet and sign up for the class, you know, and just kind of around on the website and get all the work done and get your grade and go and that that is definitely uh, your prerogative and you have that choice to make um, but at least for my part um, I'm definitely willing and here I uh, want to help you as much as possible and help you get the most out of this class so let me know how I can do that if you have any questions let me know uh, as you're trying to get rolling with the course and anything else down the line so let me know alright good luck